Hello, welcome world to the official 90s Babies podcast. I am one half of the show. I am Quay Morgan Hill, along with my great co-host, Kevy the Dreamer. And together we are the official 90s Babies. So I'm super excited about today's episode. I've actually been looking forward to this for a long time, actually. But we're going to talk about that later. But we have a super special guest today, Gary L. Gray. Uh, he's known for his um, acting roles in like The Cosby Show, um, even Stevens. He's also in animation such as The Fairly Odd Parents and my favorite, Rocket Power. So let's just jump into it. Let's talk about Rocket Power. How was it playing Squid? Man, uh, Rocket Power was actually my first major uh, animated role. So definitely Squid Sam holds a special place in my heart. Um, no, it was great. And that also was, I think, still to date, the only cast that I was ever in that was like featured kids that was all actually children. Because, you know, most of the time with VO, there's older people voicing children and, you know, teenagers. So that was all a cast of kids. So that was really cool. And I had actually worked with uh, someone before the guy who played. Um, wow. Why am I blanking? Uh the main character. Oh, Otto. Wow. <laughs> For a second, I got lost. Um, uh, I had worked with him on Slappy and the Stinker. So it was kind of a reunion of sorts when we saw each other. So that was awesome. But no, great role, great uh, cartoon. I was just thankful to be a part of it for sure. Absolutely. That was one of my favorites. Still to this day, I watch Rocket Power. I have Rocket Power merch. Like I grew up wishing, <laughs> yes, I grew up wishing I was living on that beach and just like had a small community. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wish that I knew how friends. to surf. Wish that I knew how to skate. All of that. Exactly. <laughs> I think I even tried to uh, learn how to skateboard. It didn't go too far, but I did yeah. try. Yeah, you know, I, I I was the same way. I. I was definitely a representative of Sam at first because I was not like athletic to start. I didn't get athletic till probably my sophomore year in high school. And so for me, it was just like, oh, yeah, I'm playing myself <laughs> since. But it was great because I feel like everybody was represented, you know, when it came down to uh, athletics and, you know, how you fit in and where you fit in. You know, it was really cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was a great cartoon. Yeah. Very great, like one of my top faves. <laughs> no, and, and Nickelodeon was like at its height then, you know, mm -hmm. there was uh, so many, uh, you know, cartoons that were on that were like really, really good. I think we were on at the same time as like Wild Thornberries, which was also uh, also Klasky Supo, which was the producer for Rocket Power. So really cool time to be just a part of Nickelodeon. It was just, it was awesome. <laughs> which is also the people behind Rugrats, which is. Yes. You Rugrats, know. Ah Real yes. Monsters, yes. Uh, you know, just some great properties. Yes. I mean, and they were, like I said, all around the same time. So it'd be one thing to have those like back to back. But I mean, they were just bombarding you with just great content. It was great. So around that time, what were you watching on Nickelodeon? Oh, uh, man, I was I really watching Nick? I, I don't know if I was watching Nick like that. I was really into like X-Men, the animated series. Oh, I love it. Uh, you yes. know, Batman, the animated series. Yes. I was, you know, that was kind of my lane around that time, I feel. I didn't get into those cartoons, I feel, until after I had played, <laughs> you know, the role of Sam. And then it was like, wow, exploring this world of Klasky, you know, with Rugrats and all that kind of stuff. I think I became a fan after. But yeah, I think around that time, I was definitely more into to the uh i guess <laughs> the the x-men and batman and street sharks and transformers all of that stuff I was oh into. street sharks that's a throwback oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yes uh that what really was it is. uh biker mice from mars that one too people don't remember that one i was yes. into that man it was it was a good time too <laughs> love hmm. it i don't recall some of those Yep, to gotta look it up. VR Troopers. Oh gosh, now I'm really showing my age. Oh man. <laughs> well, it's all right. We kind of already know. We know that right. you're an Aquarius. <laughs> yes, I am. I yes, am. two days before Valentine's Day, actually, correct? February 12th, yes, exactly. Lincoln's birthday. I, I was uh, okay. fortunate enough to be just enough before Valentine's Day where I'm not in the hustle and bustle of <laughs> the, the booking for, for Valentine's Day dates, but uh, it's still right on the cusp, so I usually have a hard time finding stuff to do for my birthday. <laughs> I understand that. 
Um, I'm yep. actually on the cusp of Aries and a Pisces. I'm February oh, okay. 19th, so I'm right nice. behind you. <laughs> My sister is February 24th. Oh, so, she's yeah, a Pisces. So, yeah, she is, yep. Do you believe in horoscopes? I do. You know, I, I think that all of that stuff is connected in some way, shape or form. And whether we have the actual answer to it or not, I would say is the only thing that I might question. But, you know, I think all of it's relevant in some way for sure. Yeah. OK, so what would you say then knowing that you're an Aquarius? What would you mm -hmm. say is some of your traits that you can, you know, um, basically like say a tribute to, to, to mm -hmm, Aqu yeah. an Aquarius? Uh, I'm definitely a true Aquarius male in the sense that I can isolate. Uh, I definitely love my my hermitness. I am very much a hermit crab, very much low key. You have to drag me out these days. And it's so crazy because it's the opposite, you know, sort of early on. I think around maybe, you know, 18 to 25, I was going out as much as I could. But right after 25 hit, I was like, hmm, sleepy time, eight o'clock, let's go. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, for me, I, I just love my my solitude. So I would say that that's definitely uh, a good trait that usually is attributed with Aquarius is um, also probably like the dark sense of humor. Everybody says Aquarius is have like that weird <laughs> sense of humor. So definitely have that. You know, I love my off brand humor, but uh, I don't know what else I am. I, I will say the one thing that I do, I'm not mean. Well, I, I'm not mean if you don't deserve it. So I'm not just mean to be mean, but people always say Aquariuses are mean to just be mean. And I don't believe in that. I think we're very chill. But if you cross us, then you have to watch out. So, yeah. Absolutely. That's what <laughs> my aunt sign. is an Aquarius. And uh, my aunt's birthday is actually February 15th. And she's one of my favorite people in the world. So I, I definitely agree with you. Like, she's very What's chill. Your sign? I'm a Leo, actually. Actually, okay. my birthday was uh, August 5th. So... Nice, nice. I well, think I'm happy, a good, happy belated. <laughs> thank you. I think I'm like the good essence of the Leos, but it's sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm like you guys. Like, I, I kind of know about it. I don't really believe in all of it, but I do mm -hmm. think that some of the traits are definitely like you look yeah. at it and you're like, that's definitely me. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, I guess like with everything in life, it's just a little bit of uh you know, like there's some truth to it, and then there's just like you are a little quirky, and you have you're just your own person. So. uh Course, I have like course. a little, I like I'm a shy Leo, but when I get to know you, then I'm really like outgoing and extravagant. So, gotcha. A shy gotcha. Leo, wow. Never heard <laughs> I of really that. am, for real. Yeah, really yeah, no, uh, my best friend's a Leo, my roommate. So, I, I think okay. you guys uh, might, I think you guys might have interviewed him, Michael Perkins. Yes, uh, we yeah, love him. Yeah, yes, yeah, okay. yeah. So, didn't realize yeah, he's, he's a Leo. Leo. Yep, okay. yep. So Shout out that's to him. That makes sense. Yep. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, this is all making sense. That's why me and Kevy get along. <laughs> <laughs> right. Love makes it. Sense. Love it. Yeah. So Quay mentioned her favorite show. I got to mention my favorite show. So Definitely. I feel like everybody knows you from, you know, the Cosby show, which is a wonderful show to, you know, wonderful show and yes. classic yes. and um, for our community as well. Like we love yeah. everybody. Um, side note, just, just just wanted to say that. But of course, three black people here. We we love black right. people. So, of right. course, repping for them. Um, but what I want to say is my one of my favorite shows from the 90s is Living Single. And I oh, just yeah. remember you from that show. I remember your face. I don't remember exactly what role you played. I want to say you were Overton's nephew, but you could have been Kyle's nephew. It was uh, I was it was a um, it was like a series of like a recurring. It was like recurring uh, storylines. And okay. I was supposed to be playing um, Kyle and Overton had applied for a big brother program. Oh, and so yes. it was that like I sense. was the kid that they sort of picked up and took around in the neighborhood yes. to sort of mentor and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, no, I, that was that was such a great, uh, a great uh, project to be a part of. Just so many connections and just great people a part of that. Um, yeah, it was amazing. And it's so funny because those clips have just started resurfacing like a lot recently. So on Twitter and everything, people are really posting and I'm just like, man, y'all just <laughs> finding out about this one. Huh? That is so it's funny. like it's just resurfacing. <laughs> but, you know, it just got Living Single, I think, just got put on Hulu. So, you know, a lot of people are just yes. kind of rediscovering it and some people for the first time. So uh, it's love. I love it. Definitely. Uh, that's one of my favorite shows. It's one of my comfort shows. And I mean, I just think it's one of those shows that's universal, you know? Um, yeah. 
everybody can relate to it and just everybody on that show their personality amazingly just, funny just yes a, everybody a, absolutely original a lot of people don't give it credit you know uh perfect strangers uh you know would be maybe the the first modern Mm -hmm. very hugely popular um roommate comedy i guess you yes. would say or sitcom but living single to me really sort of perfected the formula and to me really set the tone for the rest of the roommate comedies after you know the big bang theories and all mm -hmm. of those would not have had that formula had it not been for living single i think it was just really really good in a sense that it captured all aspects of what having roommates is like or living next to people that you know and you know always are you know interacting with um and i don't think it's really been replicated since like like yeah. that you know uh it right. really just hasn't you know and um i feel like it's it's just one of those things that's going to exist as that that great morsel that just can't be replicated but shout out to them um and queen latifah did her thing coming in and making sure that they kept going because i know that they were supposed to end you know after like one or two seasons it was like in danger and wow. flavor unit came in her production company came in and and made sure that they didn't so you know and got what we got you know so just very thankful for for to have been a part of that because it's history in my opinion so yeah yes wow yeah that's awesome i did not even know that mm -hmm. wow yeah that's yeah so if you look yeah if you look on the last uh i believe the last two or two seasons it's uh you you see you know her production company is on there too so i do um, remember that just, okay yeah mm -hmm. it's just great to great to have that and i think that was the first time she was able to produce something you know major so that was awesome and then went to you know produce really really good comedies and features that we love and that are classics too, you know, Absolutely. Uh, bringing down the house, you know, as a flavor of yes. production. So, yes. you know, can't, can't, can't go wrong there. So yeah, like I said, I just love that. I was a part of that sort of ground level, you know, where everybody was really catching their stride, I guess. Yeah. Including me. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's love awesome. It. Did you know that any of your roles which, that you played on, did you know that they were going to be like huge and they actually mean something to people? Like, did you know it's going to have a huge impact on a culture? I think the only one that I was aware of uh, may have been uh, uh, Noah's Ark. Um, and that's okay. just off of me doing the research uh, necessary before uh, to, you know, really uh, capture the role and, uh, you know, represent what I was, uh, you know, portraying correctly. So I felt like it was just really uh, important to me to kind of do that. And once I uncovered, you know, how amazing and important Noah's Ark was to the culture, it was just like, oh, OK, I definitely know that me being the only new character amongst this cast is going to definitely mean something. So I think mm -hmm. that was probably the only role that I've ever done that I knew beforehand, like, okay, I have a responsibility, you know, but um, other than that, no, I was completely oblivious and just, <laughs> just having fun and just literally going day to day and uh, being me, you know, I, I always take a, an approach to acting of, you know, I'm uh, embodying these characters and I'm punching the clock, you know, we, we all have a job to do and it's my job to relay these characters as, as cleanly as possible so that you guys get lost in it. So, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. But from there on, I don't, you know, anything past that, I don't care about the optics most of the time. I'm just like, I'm just going. <laughs> Let's talk you about, favorite uh, role. yes, favorite roles. That's exactly yes. what I was thinking of, Kevin. Favorite? Oh man, it's, just, it's it's a lot. I mean, I I loved uh, doing Ephraim for Blackbird, um, which was another Patrick Ian Polk production that I did, just because it stretched me, I think, the most uh, as an actor, um, and just dealing with the content of of the film and the role. And um, but you know, you can't go wrong with saying stuff like uh, Fairly Odd Parents, which you know is my longest uh, job and um, possibly most popular role. You know, when you really you know sort of look at the optics or Bring It On, All or Nothing, which I did with Friends, uh, Slapping You in the Sinkers again, something that I did with Friends. You know, so there's so many roles that hold a special place in my heart for their own individual reasons. But um, yeah, they they all have that kind of hierarchy i guess <laughs> and i could i could find something about every one of them so i don't know but those come to mind for sure for sure 
Rocket Power too, obviously, because I was just having a ball. It was like my first cartoon. I was just like, what am I doing? I'm really a cartoon character. So can't can't leave that one out, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite uh, 90s black sitcoms to watch? Ooh, man. Martin, Fresh Prince. Uh, Rewatching Living Single. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we we really were talking about the ones that I do rewatch. Um and you were on Fresh Prince, correct? I was. I was yes. on Fresh Prince as well. Yes. Yeah, I did uh a you lived a episode. life, sir. You have <laughs> yes. been on everything classic and nostalgic for us. The 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 cool thing I I, I, I the cool thing <laughs> no, the cool thing I figured out uh I think it was like two in, in the pandemic actually first year of the pandemic 2020 was that I did Fresh Prince, uh Cosby Show, Living Single, and uh, uh wow what am I leaving out? Oh man, wait oh I said what did I say Fresh Prince Cosby Show, Living Single. Mm -hmm. There's one other one, and I'm blanking. Oh, no. Let's look up the IMDb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, I did them all before I turned uh, six. So, wow. uh, you know, just being on, you know, for... Oh, Family Matters. Bam, there it oh, is. Oh, okay. Um, right. so, um, so being on, you know, practically the four major Black, yeah. um, you know, sitcoms of the time. Uh, you know, before I was six, just finding what out that blessing. like weird, weird stat, right? I was just like, man, wow. that's crazy. Um, so yeah, looking at that, and um, so Family Matters as well. You know, it's crazy because every uh, sitcom that I was uh, on during that time was something that my family literally was watching, you know, actively. So um, I guess you could say I was very much familiar with the source material and did not need to stretch myself when it came down to auditioning for these things because I was, like I said, you know, really actively watching this stuff. Um, you know, uh, thankfully I didn't audition for Martin because I was not allowed to watch that one uh, that early. <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, but the others I was. Hmm, that is so interesting. I'm telling you, you got to change what? that middle initial to what? <laughs> the goat. <laughs> no, never, never, <laughs> never. I, yes, you know, I, I mean, you grew up in that era and we all watched you, you know, as a child. And you're part of like the family now, you know, like you, you were there with us. Like, you I, I, man, y'all was part of the family too. I loved, you know, watching. And it's crazy because I have, you know, people who were my peers that were, you know, my age that I grew up with that I loved watching, you know, even, you know, as the same age as them. Uh, so I felt like I was family with other people just as much as you felt like I was family with me. So it goes both ways for sure. Yes, that's awesome. Right. That is beautiful. I love this. This just like makes my whole heart just all warm and fuzzy on the inside. <laughs> just talking about the great times. Like, what are some things that are nostalgic to you? Wow. Um, hmm. Nostalgic. I mean, I'm definitely food uh, because I was a snacker, you know, as a kid. Yes. So I'm always <laughs> thinking of like old food. Uh, I'm also a gamer. So, you know, retro gaming uh, is a big deal for me. That's my pastime. That was my escape. Uh, obviously, cartoons and comics, same thing. Uh, you know, nerd, as, as you can see, my my anime <laughs> behind us. Um, that's so I don't know. I don't. OK, yes. Yeah, that's not nice what you from, say. Her uh, name, yes. It's really bright. It's probably going to go down in a second. But yeah, it's uh, Nezuko from uh, Demon Slayer. Yes. Uh, and she's got but... the thing over her mouth. I know yes, her because yeah. <laughs> my, my little cousin is obsessed with her and I was going to yes. shout her out. Yes, I love it. Yeah, her. I mean, okay. hey, I just put it up for sale. So I don't know if your little cousin wants some art. I don't know how old they are. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, but um, okay. but yeah, I, I all of those things are a part of my upbringing. So I'm always looking to, you know, old stuff in the, you know, in that case. Um, but yeah, some things that I can note, um, old Disney VHS tapes, you know, yes. puppy boxes. Yes. <laughs> Right, um, and the little, you know, what do they wow. call it, the clamshells? Yeah, yes. you know, and it like creaks yes. and squeaks every time right. you touch it. It's just yes. like you're touching a balloon every time you want to <laughs> watch a movie. Um, stuff like that is just definitely fresh in my mind as nostalgia. Um, uh, old properties that are kind of now being brought back 
as fresh, i.e. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, are something that are very retro to me because that was, you know, what I grew up with. That's what I grew up idolizing. Uh, my mom, as a matter of fact, taught me just before I was going to cut off these two fingers because I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle when I was oh, three Lord. and a half years old. So <laughs> thankfully, um, you know, I, I did not make it. Uh, but yeah, I was that into Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, uh, especially um, I had a book made where I was like the featured character in a Ghostbuster story, you know, as a kid, oh, <laughs> stuff that. like that, Okay, you know, uh, okay. so that, that was like my speed, but yeah, yeah. Uh, which I loved the new Ghostbusters movie that came out, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yes. Really good. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Um, I just got a, a new Turtles, uh, Funko Pop. So, um, I started my Funko collection. And uh, that was my third one. So, yeah, <laughs> I got a Donatello. <laughs> oh, I love it. So you got to tell me what's your favorite or some of them, some of your favorite old games Sorry. and some of your favorite. Um, you also said some comic books. Those are right up my alley. Oh, I'm a nerd. Yeah. Too. Uh, so I, uh, man, I have uh, some some ones in, uh, in my closet in the, in the plastic right now. Uh, I've collected so many over the years some of most of them honestly are just random like i don't really have many like mm -hmm. storylines i do have one yeah. storyline that i actually collected that i'm proud of which is death of superman so uh okay. when okay. superman died uh yes the first time um because yes. <laughs> he's died so many right. um <laughs> when he died the first time i have the uh, collection across all of the superman comics uh when that event happened so superboy uh steel which was you know, the one that was the black Superman made after John Henry yes. with the hammer, yes. uh, you know, okay. uh, Superman. Yes. So uh, that's really kind of like my pride and joy. I also have okay. um, some really good Batman storylines, um, some yes. Black Panther. Yes. Um, some crossovers that I'm proud of, X-Men and Star Trek, um, okay. which is, you know, really cool. So, yeah, I'm geek, you know, when it comes to that. Games, oh, man, I own, okay. I've owned every system um with the exception of a sega saturn uh oh my god we're basically. twins same here so, that's the one i never could get my mom was yeah like, no. i had a genesis <laughs> i had i had all of the genesis but i never had a saturn because i i had at that time was looking at the playstation so you know that was that was in my eyes so um but yeah i i mean name it i've you know played it as far as genre i pretty much play everything except puzzle you know, mm -hmm. I'm not really a huge puzzler. I know that, you know, that's kind of making a comeback, but not really a huge puzzler. But okay. everything else I have at least dabbled in. But my favorite is RPG okay. Adventure. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> Tomb Raider, like all that kind of stuff you. is what I, I grew it. up with. Yeah. Oh, my you know. gosh. My cousin, my cousin would love you. He loves Tomb Raider. He's like obsessed with that right now. That's so nice. Funny. I haven't uh, I haven't finished the the last one that they like kind of brought back and redid. But um yeah, okay. I'm I'm going through right now. Oh man, what did I just pick up? Oh, I'm playing Days Gone, which is a okay. old PS4 game that yeah. I decided to play because it was free. So I was like, you know what? Let me see what this is about. It's actually not bad. Uh, okay. I'm I'm having fun. But I'm a Overwatch Apex player. Yes. You know, okay. we can hop on the sticks and, uh, you know, see what's what. <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> yep. Play's like, I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> I know like, this is games. all French. <laughs> right. I mean, I know like Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I hey, know, uh, I have hey a, that's a throwback. Uh, okay. Yep. You know, I know that about is definitely Crazy a throwback. Taxi. Okay. I, yes. yes. I had well. Crazy Taxi on yes. Dreamcast. Uh, Me I don't too. know if you remember Sega Dreamcast. Yes. And it, the, the Sega Dreamcast was so cool because they had the memory card in the controller and right. it could like come out and you yes. could like play games and Tamagotchi on it. It was it was dope. Oh, like man. I mean, they were innovative. I still have yet to see. I need that. Like, why don't we have that? I know, I right? PS5. Right. I need that. I, I need my that. PS5 controller just to pop out and it'd be a touch screen <laughs> Tamagotchi. Like, why not? Come on, I get on that it, would Sony. Be funny. Chop chop. <laughs> right. <laughs> Crazy. Yes, I love this. This is so fun. Yeah. So I love the. I love. By the way, don't 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 think that it is lost on me that you have the '90s shades on. You know, with the shirt. You know, I see yes. the style. Yes. Is, okay. Is, 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 is there? I wish I got you could you. see the whole fit. Right. <laughs> right. I. Hey, it's represented. I. I see it. It's, yes, it's we had to well show done. out. Yes. Right. Kevin right. has a '90s shirt on too. It's a little hard oh. to see, but it's um. 
I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it says the 90s are all that. Okay, okay. I like it. It's that vintage look. I see it. Yes, I see yes. it. Okay. I love the, yeah. the earrings is what's killing me. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's, <laughs> that, Cause like that's, 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 that's that like part. kids choice awards, like circa, you know, uh, what do you call it? Like, Oh, two, you know, that right. was when kids choice awards was like popping. I mean, yeah. those were the days. Cause Miss I, it. um, we went for fairly odd parents once. I think we won best ensemble cast one year. And I, those I believe were, it to I date it. still yeah. the best after parties that I've ever been to. Oh what? my god! Just like because it's like you know it's like people are just having fun, you know, and like yeah. a lot of the older celebrities that normally are like you know trying to you know impress people and yeah. you know do kind of you know the schmoozing and seeing what next job they can you know slide into. It's like none of that. Everybody's just there with their kids, Love you know. That. Like everybody's just all the walls are down, and everybody's just having fun. So I, I love going to those events because it's just no kind of you know no egos. We're just yeah. we're just all kids there, <laughs> you know. True. One That's year awesome. they had a um a whole wall of like every fr- uh, flavor slushy, like it was like twenty some flavors, and oh, it was wow. just like unlimited all you could eat. That was just great, like wow. stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, sugar like, up. who doesn't want to go to that party? I know, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm curious you know, to know: Have I, you ever been slimed? I have. I did. Um, uh, Wild and Crazy Kids. Oh my gosh, I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I did Wild and Crazy Kids. Uh, and I did a. It was on stage, but they filmed it live, and I got slimed there. Um, I also got slimed at the Kids Choice Awards too. So yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, awesome! Yep. Wow, you, you live. Quay's been Quay's been slimed as well. Yeah, oh. but that don't count. This is today's slime. I want ninety <laughs> slime. Oh, uh, well, you know, it, 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 the formula might be different, maybe, but you it know, definitely it's still is. there. It's still there, love. <laughs> the the slime stink. Stink. It's back then too. I always said it smelled like chicken and oatmeal, but like old chicken oh and my oatmeal. Gosh. But what? It does. It like it has this weird after smell that it leaves on your hands. It's not pleasant, not at all. It's like, have you ever had like Gap? You remember Gap? Like, there's a retro thing. Oh yes, thing. I do remember Gak, that. Yes, right? yes. And like Gap had all kinds of like like textures and stuff, but the smooth yes. one, if you like left that out, it smelled like oatmeal. It just smelled. Oh like wow. Old <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's what that's what slime reminds me of. <laughs> just old oatmeal. Oh, oh my that's gosh. terrible. That's terrible. Yep. It smelled like feet to me. But I was well, in- yeah. I was and the formula this- has changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And it was like more watery. So mm, I felt yeah. like it wasn't really like slimy on my skin. It was right. just more of like a water texture that I could have just easily mm. wiped off. So yeah. it was not um the best yeah. experience getting <laughs> as an adult. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> but it was great though. So let's talk about the 50th anniversary of hip hop. When mm. you hear that, what rappers mm-hmm. do you think of? Wow, man. Um, one of the last living greats to kind of see it start, Rakim. Um, you know, yes. it's just like, you know, I feel like he really uh, gets overlooked a lot. Yes. Um, I feel like, uh, obviously, LL you know uh okay. is someone who deserves to be in that conversation uh, a couple of ones that come to mind just because i grew up uh in that sort of era where it was really sort of coming to fruition that whoa this is something that's really popular but i was listening to like heavy d uh my mom was listening to nwa and mm-hmm. trying to slide me the clean versions you know so <laughs> you know um early on i was a a, a huge fan of rap and um you know and hip hop just encompasses everything as far as the culture then you 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 bring all of the other elements in and you really look at like man i was actually really actively participating in all of these things and we didn't even know it because people are like oh man i don't know any djs it's like yes you do you've heard of dj jazzy jeff like yeah. and yeah. that's a real dj you know yeah. like it's not like he's fake you know or doesn't yeah. dj like <laughs> he, he can probably cut it with anybody on the table so um you look at that and you look at graffiti artists that have grown to produce clothing you know uh with uh what was it marco echo or mark echo yeah, uh, yeah. who you know had his line in the 90s yeah. 
that grew from him just simply being a graffiti artist, you know? So mm. stuff like that just really comes to mind uh, when I hear that it's hip hop's 50th anniversary, just the the amount of branches that it caused for just society in general to, to participate and, and ingest. It's just amazing. So yeah, shout out to hip hop. Yes, <laughs> I love that. I love that answer. Yeah. I think about Tupac, Biggie, you know, I think about like the beefs. <laughs> Uh -huh. Oh, the beats, uh, yeah. Jay Z, like oh yeah, I love oh yeah. It. <laughs> and CJ is my favorite rapper, so I definitely heard all of the, you know, all of that beef. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. but that I was tried an epic to, time. Oh yeah, you know, I um, <clears throat> I remember buying DMX's uh, autobiography mm -hmm. and um, reading about his his battle with Jay, like you know, his first one, and it was just uh, like in some you know uh, rec hall. And they were just standing on, you know, tables and people were standing on folding chairs and stuff like that and going head to head. And like I all to this day, I say there needs to be, you know, we <laughs> I don't say we're wasting time. That's me. But I feel like we need to get to DMX's movie already because that is the cinema that needs to be made. Like we've had big and pock like multiple movies you yeah. know made about them and i think that earl simmons definitely uh deserves that for sure for sure because his life was absolutely like insane just I, I don't know if you guys have ever heard yeah. any of the stories but like yeah so um just thinking about that like oh my gosh it just gives me goosebumps because i loved reading about that and just uh yeah even dmx i mean ugh, that that's somebody that i think about when i hear about hip-hop too because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. talk about an innovator yeah for sure yeah, yeah. for sure odb wu-tang mm -hmm, i mm -hmm. think about all of those tribe <laughs> yeah yeah what oh, yeah. about you kevy Oh man, you guys are taking me back. I, you know, when we talked about this earlier, Quay, when we talked about 50 years, Gary, you just really made me think of the innovators of who started it. Cause I didn't think about the OGs that are, we've lost so many people. Yeah. So when I think about it, I got to go back to, like you said, I think about my dad, my dad's no longer here. And I think about him playing like classic people like Sugar Hill Gang. I think about mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, I think about, oh gosh, um, I got to think of their names. Um, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I can't think of what is his name. Gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I can't think of his name, like but that's why. I... Sometimes it makes me wonder. Yeah, how you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, oh my God, and who is forgive that? me. That's not. Uh, I... That's not. That's not Big Daddy Kane, is it? No, I, I don't think I don't it is. Think so. But there's oh, one. Grandmaster there's Flash. Grandmaster, Grandmaster, Grandmaster Flash. Flash. Right, 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 okay, right, yes. now, I think about them people. I think about that. I think about like you said, the people that are no longer Africa here. Africa Bambata. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think about Missy Elliott. I love her. She's like one of my favorites mm -hmm. ever. Yes. Um, I think she's so talented. Like she can Definitely. sing and rap, and just the talent that she's found is just crazy. Like Tweet is her voice is immaculate, and just some mm -hmm. of the people she's discovered. Um, gosh, I love Nas. I I mm -hmm. love Jay Z as well. So many people. I, I think about yeah. classics like '90s. I think about like Foxy and Kim, and mm -hmm. you know just what it used to be like and now it's just gotten to a scary place where you know like Lil Nas X not excuse me not Lil Nas X I meant to say um gosh what is his name um he passed uh, away he was murdered oh like, ex, in his uh ex 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 you know, uh yes I don't know that that's what that I was trying to say I didn't mean yes. Yes. yes but I think about just craziness like these people yeah. are just it, it's just scary now and it's just well I think uh, be, I think with most art, sorry, not to cut you off. I didn't mean no, to cut you good. off, Kevin, mm -hmm. but with, I think all art, what we're facing is just sort of that, um, that means uh, that we're losing the journey part. You know what I mean? Yes. We, we're right. able to, we're able to kind of instantly sort of microwave people into mm -hmm. stardom, essentially. So, yeah. you know, um, a, a lot of people don't understand that we, I, I come from an era where you had literal development programs for people who had to right, go right. through classes and time to mm -hmm. actually perform on stage. You know, there were these things called development deals at, right. you know, record labels where you didn't see the light of day until you proved your, your worth on stage or mm -hmm. sold a couple records at local, you know, record shops and got to a couple DJs. Like that was a, a thing, you know, even with my, my career, with um you know doing film i remember having chemistry meetings you know with cast members and mm -hmm. going out and like you know for slapping the stinkers we were in 
uh, sea lion camp for like a month. And then we hung out for like a month just to build that chemistry as four kids. Or, and that sorry, makes sense. Five, sorry, five. Yeah, yeah. Five kids who were, yeah. who were um, you know, trying to, you know, be on screen and, and portray some, you know, right. kids that actually were friends, you know, so. I think that now is it's that's what's lost. You know, we don't have that journey part, that middle part of the work that is that, you know, that's necessary. So when you are able to give people these large sums of money and these large followings without that journey, you're going to get everything kind of muddled, you know, uh, as far as talent wise, you're just going to get people who can replicate the formula, you know, correctly. So that's all, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. And I'll tell you one more thing that I think of is I think about we don't have music videos anymore. Oh, um, I miss them. I, so I think much. about yeah, they I go think along about with like, the song. Yeah, <laughs> right? like we don't we don't have that anymore. And Gosh. I think about like all that. I loved all that when like all of these artists would come perform and oh yeah, yeah. it's it's just proper it's sketch a, shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just it's just yeah. a whole different time. It's just so- yeah, you know, media is different. A lot of people blame streaming. I don't. I think that um. I think that what we what we kind of what we really lost was that sort of audience. Um, I say this all the time. I think we started treating the audience like they're stupid, you know, and and that's, you know, whenever you do that, you're going to you know sort of fall into the tropes of not having things be as sort of, uh, I don't know, artful as you can you know when and that's across the board from music to art to you know acting film tv whatever you you know fashion you know i mean you look at fashion now you know and what kanye has put out and see when you he doesn't have to do anything you know it's a shirt with holes in it literally you know and so that's where we are and so like i said it's just kind of one of those things where when you treat the audience like that, it's you're going to get stuff that represents how you're, you know, what you're putting out and the energy that you're putting out. That's that's all you're going to get back. So, you know, unfortunately, there there is a lot of that. However, there I think we what we can do is focus on the independent stuff, you know, especially in the black community. We have just yeah. such an influx now, thankfully, of, of good uh, art when it comes to film, TV uh you know actors that are uh on the up and come you know that just are fantastic and i think that that's kind of the bright spot and everything you know for all of the the 10 or 15 bad rappers you have you you know you still have one like chloe and hallie you know (laughs) you know it's like you know it's great you know and so refreshing and we can we can still revel in that um you know in my day it was like you you couldn't focus on the good talent because there was so much and there were so right. many people to look mm-hmm. forward to and now unfortunately it's flipped and you're kind of hoping for that same actor to come out with another movie because it's been a while you know mm-hmm. <laughs> so um that you know unfortunately is our reality but I, like i said i think that we make it through the storm we make it through what's going on now with the strike um and demand better you know we just have to as an audience um and and, and it also has to do with I think actors and producers, directors, writers, you know, across the board, not being consumers anymore. Um, You know, we get caught up in just making, 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 doing, 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 and you forget to partake in, you know, the industry that you are, you are in. Uh, You know, I am an avid, you know, television watcher. I go, you know, to the movies, you know, I am ingesting this stuff every day if I can. Uh, and I think that creates a humanity and it also creates a responsibility that, oh, I can't just put out because I've seen, you know, the spectrum and I have to I have to make sure that I'm doing something that really, you know what I mean, just really uh, speaks to me and speaks to an audience. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, that was a long winded answer. I'm sorry. But I think that no, that's really what it is. You know, we're yeah. just missing that stuff. Um, yeah. I was talking about this with someone the other day. So I think I was continuing the conversation. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's all good. We understand. We're we with understand. you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So are you participating in the strike? Uh, yeah, I am. I mean, I have not picketed it yet. Unfortunately, I was out of town. And then when I got back in town, I was immediately put back to work. So I told myself, I actually tweeted like, three days ago I was like who's going with me next week (laughs) you know so um yeah this upcoming week I definitely plan to uh go protest um but yeah I am you know I am on strike just like uh all of us um you know thankfully we do have 
um, commercial and voiceover work that is still available to us um, during this time. Um, but, you know, it's it's difficult. You know, I was a part of uh, two, probably the two biggest projects that I've ever been a part of, um, you know, before the strike. And now, you know, everything's at a halt. So uh, it is unfortunate, but it is very, very necessary. And I stand with both unions. Uh, you know, I am a writer as well, even though I am, you know, I don't make my my uh, my name with uh, with writing, but I consider myself a writer. And uh, that is definitely something that I look to be, uh, you know, further into my career. And so I, you know, I stand with them before anything. I think writers are probably the most disrespected position uh, in my uh, arena. And it's, uh, it's sad um, to look at something that I want to do so bad, just be sort of mistreated and, and mal, uh, malnourished uh, in a sense. So I really hope that they get to where they need to go because to be honest, I, I feel like the actors shouldn't, you know, go to the table until their deal is done, um, you know, in my eyes. So, um, you know, really is uh, an unfortunate situation, but mm -hmm. like I said, very necessary. Oh yeah, for sure. I agree with that. And I totally get it. I totally get it. Um, but I have seen a lot of criticism about the strike too. What's your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? When people say like, oh, they could just get a regular job or, you know. Well, I mean, you know, now that people are really sort of into, uh, you know, longer days in the strike, they're seeing that a lot of us have had regular jobs. So all of that doesn't make any sense to us because when you say go get one, okay, cool. Yeah, we did that too. Now what? You know, right. so, um, you know, for, for, for me, uh, I, I, I tell people all the time, I, I held as many regular jobs as I could. Um, and I just come from a, a family of workers and people that, you know, weren't afraid to get their hands dirty and I never, you know, shied away from it. So it never uh, made sense to me to sit and uh, just be somewhere and sort of eat up money and use up money. So uh, anytime that I could work and do something else, I I could and, and did. So um, that that was kind of uh, my eyes with that. So the criticism of, uh, you know, oh, just go out and work or even the the really bad one. Oh, they're all rich, yeah. um, which is now you see is <laughs> such a lie. Um, you know, that one is just beyond me as well, because I, I mean, especially I, I don't know if you guys have seen the pie charts when you see the disparity between how the studios make their money and what they're making versus what we are not making right now, but even asking for even the increase that we're asking for is still less than 0.1% of their wealth. It's wow. just insane to think about. So, um, yeah, I, you know, it's, uh, it's been like that, you know, and I, I've been a SAG member uh, since 91, you know, uh, longer than a lot of people that I know. And so Me? I've just <laughs> been <laughs> 92, Damn. 30 right, yeah, years I've ago. Been, literally a SAG member longer than a lot of people have been alive so you know I've been through these these waves you know you I've just been a bit. through every year <laughs> I think well tell that to my back okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah you know it's just uh it's it's like I said very sad and it's crazy to think that you have people who are veterans like me you know any think about this any job um that you go to school for or go to a university for two, three, four years uh, and then enter into that field and then do that for 30 years. Think about the things that come along with the job in, the, in, the, in any other workforce with that kind of seniority, with that kind of experience. I should be able to go to any company and get a job, just walk in, just, hey, how you doing? You know, instant high pay, bonuses, benefits, you know, all of the above. And, you know, we are talking about, you know, me going out to auditions to work for basically actors minimum wage, which is what we call scale, you know? So, and that's across the board, you know, except for, as we said, you know, 1% of, of our members. Um, and thankfully uh, from what I hear that that 1% has donated heavily to the fund, which is great. Um, but it's just a drop in the pond of what we need, you know, even with their millions of dollars of donations, you know, what are we getting a check? Probably all of us maybe for a hundred bucks. 
you know, which is like, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> you know, so much. But um, we want what we deserve, you know, at this point, because we cannot sustain, you know, now, you know, back in the day when we had our economy in the way that it was, we were able to sort of go along with what we were doing. But as America got more and more ridiculous, uh, you know, and just more obscene when it comes down to the cost of living, you know, none of our stuff went, you know, went up with that. So, and none of our pay or benefits. So uh, I think that's what we're seeing is that, wow, we have sort of done a disservice to every uh, actor and performer um, you know, in this game, because this is what we've been going through for the past decade, you know, at least. So, yeah, yeah that those criticisms don't everything. don't sit well with me. And and even some actors are making those criticisms, which are crazy. Uh, you know, I just had a tweet go viral talking about Stephen uh, Amell uh, or Green Arrow there right. uh, and his comments and his shenanigans that was that were happening. And then now he's been seen on the picket line. So, right. you know, it's like, you know, great, you know, better late than never, I guess. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's definitely uh, something that I feel everybody should be supporting. There's no reason mm-hmm. to not want this. I, I mean, people are really whining and saying this while literally um ingesting all of our content you know every single day people are literally criticizing the fact that we're striking but at the same time have every streaming service attached to their tvs and phone and it just makes no sense to me because then why why do those exist in your you know in your home delete everything yeah (laughs) criticize us then you cannot go to the movies you can't go you know see you know uh spider-man you can't go see terminate uh teenage mutant ninja turtles you know none of it you know so that's to me um where we're at but um and it sucks for us as well actors to be a part of things and not be able to promote you know i have friends that are a part of great great uh projects right now that can't talk about them same for me so it's just, uh, you know, it sucks, but again, very necessary and the mm-hmm. criticisms are not welcome. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yep. And I hope this comes to an end soon. You guys, this should be like a cut and dry case. You guys deserve better pay, better opportunities. Like, I mean, yeah. it just makes sense. Why not? You guys are the creators. So definitely. And the creatives. Definitely. So it just makes and sense. A, and again, like, you know, it's it's not that we are just saying, oh, pay us more. We're literally just asking for a piece of the wealth. You know, we now have the facts. We know what they make. We okay. see the profits. You know, it's not like we're just every year coming and whining and being like, we don't make enough money. We're just going, hey, whoa. Hey, I saw that you guys pulled in like $300 billion dollars just give us a little bit of that, you know, just, just a stiblet, you know, and that's, uh, that's what we're doing. So uh, I think that we will come to uh, an agreement soon. Uh, I heard that the writers are going back to the table. Um, so shout out to everyone involved, uh, all of my writers, all of my uh, WGA friends, stay strong. Uh, hopefully you guys come to something soon because I know everybody is hurting and they have it worse. You know, most writers don't get residuals like actors do. You know, I'm thankful that residuals is something that does keep me afloat. Uh, I had a friend, uh, Giovanni uh, Samuels, uh, who I did bring it all or nothing with. She went viral uh, not too long ago um, talking about this this particular uh, situation and saying how her residuals weren't enough to keep her afloat and she had two jobs and you know all of those things and you know that's our reality you know so it's just like you know I I don't understand how um we can't come to something you know and the writers are worse off you know to think about that like that's our reality and the writers are they don't even have that safety net they have to rely on just simply receiving that day pay or whatever that first check is and just making it stretch and have no clue when that can be taken away from them or even something else coming in it's wild you know hmm. what's the fame without the fortune Huh. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> nothing. Uh, nothing. A headache. <laughs> yeah. That's what it this sounds what it like. Is. Yeah. Mm. So one last thing before we wrap things up. Um, what are some important lessons that you learned throughout your journey? Wow. I have. What has being a child star taught you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I learn every day. 
uh, every day. I, you know, every time I do a project, I try to just take everything in. I'm the quiet one on set that people always have to bring out and be like, hey, come mingle with people. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm always ingesting. I'm always trying to figure out how to make all of our jobs easier. You know, I think that a lot of times the powers that be, everything is working against you to try to figure out how to maximize profit and all of the cast and crew kind of get the short end of that stick. And so I've just taken the last couple of years to really see what, what we can do to just make all of this easier for us, you know, and I say us with purpose uh, because it is harder for, for our community, black people to, to be on a set and to be seen and to be taken seriously um, to be considered for investment money and, you know, uh, you know, pitch meetings and things like that. You know, those are the things you never hear about. You know, we're constantly seeing about the new actor or actress that is, you know, coming into the scene. But there's so many other positions that we have that need to be filled. Visual effects artists, we need Black visual effects artists, people with those eyes that can represent us, you know, not just actors. We can we can only do so much, you know, and uh, and writers and directors and producers and all of those things. Um, it starts there with us really trying to make it, you know, all easier for each other. So that's all that I've been doing is really trying to take that in. <laughs> um, but uh, one thing that I always uh, tell my students uh, that I coach is to just really take this, uh, it is a responsibility, you know, um, for me, taking it seriously and having fun is, it goes one and the same. Um, but taking it seriously definitely has that weight, you know, to it because every role that I take, I should feel some type of responsibility. I have a responsibility to do something with that, to make it unique, to not just be a number, um, because, you know, what we're talking about with drag with AI, you know, if if I didn't take it that seriously, then I might as well give my job up to robots, you know, at that point, because they're good enough now, right? You know, that's what we say. So um, I tell myself, you know, even with something like that, I'm unique enough, be unique enough to to just stand out and just be you, you know, that's literally the best thing that you can do uh, to stand out. Um, because the moment that you try to say, okay, well, what's successful and chase that, you're going to just fall into uh, a lot of tropes and a lot of, uh, you know, shadows because there's so many, <laughs> you know, you can never, you can't think about uh, the first time, you know, you or the, the, the last time that you said someone is like the last one of that actor. Can you, you know what I mean? Maybe Denzel. You know, will we have another Denzel? But I mean, I've heard that I've heard the Idris Elba kind of slides into that too, you know, and all those, you know. So, you know, mm. it's it's getting to the point where we can we are no longer having that uniqueness. Be you. Don't try to be the next thing because that's all we're getting is the next person. You know, Michael B is not Michael B. He's the next blah 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 blah. You know, so um, it's just um, for me, uh, the most important thing has always been that no one can ever say that Gary L. Gray was the copy of that one or this, that one. <laughs> you know, they say I look like Taj, but <laughs> <laughs> I see it, but I, see I am, it. but I am not. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, I'm thankful that everything that I've done, uh, people have said that, like, wow, like it really you know, was that thing. I've never heard somebody say, well, I'd rather have seen, you know, such or such in that role. <laughs> so I'm thankful. Um, and that's all I try to do, bring that uniqueness. And you do. You live one hell of a life. I appreciate it. <laughs> Man, I tell people, I was and like, you still look good. Right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. I tell people like that in Living Color skit with the, the Jamaican guy, he's like, I got 10 job, man, you know? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how I feel about my lives, you know? It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> I've lived a lot of it, so I'm very thankful for every single step, uh, and it's still going, and I feel, unfortunately, I feel like it's just getting started, uh, according to my body, and my body's not happy, <laughs> so about to try to get younger and turn back the clock, guys, so that I can give y'all another 30 years. <laughs> okay, Benjamin Button. <laughs> you know, you know. Um, can I ask something of you? Can you do the voice of Squid just one time, just for the inner child in me? <laughs> you know, I I try as hard as I can to get Squid, and I have not been able to replicate it since my voice changed. So I did, so I did Rocket Power from ages ten to fourteen, 
And literally when we ended was when good old PBD monster came <laughs> and in my voice was completely different. So, I mean, I have tried, it's, I, I don't even want to butcher it for you. I don't want to ruin your memory. <laughs> I, can't, I can't, I had to work. The only, the only voice that I was able to continue was AJ. Cause like I said, I was on there for 16 years and I had to literally like work with it. I'm thankful to Butch Hartman that they kept bringing me back because they could have easily recast him. But, you know, to keep going through puberty and all stages of like adulthood even and try to continue to get AJ. That's the only one that I can still do. But I can I can do AJ for you just in case. So that way, uh, maybe it's like a substitution for Squid, okay? Um, well, I can't get Timmy to get the fairies because he's off doing something, but um, deuces. <laughs> I love, I love it. it. I love it. Oh, that made my day. <laughs> Thank I appreciate you, so you much. guys so much. No, yeah, we appreciate so much you. Fun. Absolutely. Yeah, and I hope that maybe after the strike, you know, I can come and break some news on on you know on the podcast or something. Yeah, you know, we would come love that. back. That would be awesome. We would yeah. love that. Yeah, and at that time, if you need help with anything like promotion, we'll be happy to repost it on our pages and get yes. the word out. Whatever you want us to do, we would definitely do it. For sure. Awesome. You guys are so great. And I hope uh, much continued success for the show. You guys are doing it big. I can't Thank I can't you. wait to see what you guys have. I mean, I'm talking about I, I need y'all out here for, you know, Kids Choice Awards and stuff. Yes, you know? that's our that's, right. that's, our, oh. that's what I see. I need Nick to get on it. You know what I mean? Because oh, I need I, I, I miss those times with good personalities, real personalities like, you know, DJs and, 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 and influencers. Well, we didn't call them influencers back then. Right. <laughs> That's what they are now. And you guys hosting something, you know, like a little Mike Super short show for Nick, you know, a 90s, you know, show. Come on, Nick. You know, that's that's, that's the stuff we need back. Let's speak you know? that into existence. Come on, of course, Nick. Of Come course. on, God. Somebody. Yes. Like, yes. Exactly. Exactly. We're going to yes. do it. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that so much. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so, much. so, guys, make sure you follow him at Instagram. Are you on Facebook? Uh, I am. I believe it's Gary L. Gray on Facebook as well, you know, spaced out with my name. Uh, and then on Twitter and Instagram, it's all the letters together. G-A-R-Y-L-G-R-A-Y, not E-Y. Uh, a lot of people try to spell my, my last name with the E, but it is the A version. <laughs> so don't forget. Uh, but yeah, I'm on uh, mostly Instagram and Twitter all the time. So okay. Yes, right. please follow him and support him great energy we we have we've had the time today thank you so yeah, much thank you right. guys no it was it was yes. awesome it was a blast <laughs> and now is it safe to call you the goat no <laughs> I, I, I don't like that word hey, hey no i'm telling you wait wait till after wait till after the strike and wait give me give me five, like four years and then we're going to revisit this conversation and I, I, I might consider it then, you know, I, <laughs> I, I allowed, I allowed the legend word to be had because uh, Nickelodeon uh, had honored me for black history month one year. And so I was like, you know what? And I was mentioned with Cree and Phil Lamar and oh, you know, I love all those it. people. So I was like, okay, okay, I can go ahead and accept that word. But goat is like, you know, that's a little much. So many, you know. So I, I don't, want, you know, we'll just stick with the the L word for now, the legend word. We'll legend, do. okay. We'll do <laughs> okay, that. we can be legendary. Y'all are legendary. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So make sure you follow me, Quay Morgan Hill, on Instagram, and also Kevy the Dreamer on Instagram. Follow our page, eighties, nineties, and two thousands vibes as well on Instagram on what apple what else i heart apple, oh, so many uh, different spotify i heart radio we're everywhere YouTube. wherever you wherever you stream your podcast and youtube for visual right until next time guys i love you all Mwah. much love everyone thank you <laughs>